Welcome everybody to the first lecture of Martingale theory with applications. I am starting with a, a little bit of measure theory with a little bit of sets and events and the reason is that we're going to deal with these in a probability space and we need to go through some of the basic definitions. Now what I'm going to do here as measure theory is just scratching the surface of it. It's by no means is a replacement of a proper measure theory course. I am just going to define some of the most important notions which we are going to use in Martingale theory. Also, I'm not going to do most of the proofs because they are done in my further topics in probability unit. Of course, if you go to a proper measure theory course, they are done in more details there as well. So I'm talking about measure theory. And everything I'm going to do is, of course, is uh, from the point of view of probability. So we are going to be given a set omega, which I'm going to call the sample space. And we're going to think about this set as the set of possible outcomes of an experiment. And this could, in general, be very complicated. Okay. Now, what we are looking at first, as a very first approximation, is going to be the power set of omega. Power set of omega. Okay, so that's just the set of all subsets. I'm just going to write this in words, set of all subsets of omega. Okay, so all possible parts of omega. Now, this is too large, and <laughs> this is too general at this form to deal with, and therefore we're going to restrict this subset, this power set, sorry, we're going to restrict this power set to various uh, constructions, which we can work with later on. So here's our first attempt of doing that. Definition, a system, a system, A which is a subset of the power set. So some subsets of omega, a collection of some subsets of omega. This system is called an algebra. And this is not the algebra which you learn from, uh, which, you, which you learn about in an algebra unit. This is a set theoretic algebra or measure theoretic algebra. If the following is true, first the Omega itself, which is considered as a subset of Omega, is member of this family A. Okay. Second, if you have two members, A and B, in this family of subsets, so A and B are subsets of Omega which belong to this family A, then it follows, so if this happens, then it follows that the union of these two is also in A. Okay. And third, if you have a set, a subset of omega, A, in this family script A, then it follows that its complement, which is just omega minus my set A, is also in this script A family. Okay, so that's the definition of an algebra. And one remark here is that from these two properties, you can easily cook up that in that case, <coughs> If A and B are, again, uh, members of this family, then it follows Then it follows that the intersection is also a member. So to get from unions to intersections, you can do some complements, and you can easily cook up that, uh, in that case, not only unions will be member of the family, but also intersections. Okay, so that's a corollary of B and C. Okay, so that was my first definition of a, an algebra. And then I'm going to uh, tell you about finitely additive measures, which are not yet proper measures. Okay, so definition. Oops. Definition. So let the script A be an algebra, as in the previous part. Okay. And let a function mu go from a to the real interval zero infinity except notice that infinity is actually included 
so it's it's a real interval extended with infinite uh, um, numbers the number infinity okay so this function is a finitely additive measure finitely additive measure on the algebra A if the following is true if the following is true take any two sets in the algebra for any two sets A and B in the algebra with no overlap, no intersection A intersection B empty the following is true for any two such sets. If I look at this set of the union, now notice that the union is also an element of the algebra, so it makes sense to talk about this function of that union. This is actually turning into the sum of the individual values of the function on A and on B. Okay, so this is the definition of a finite additive measure if you have non-overlapping disjoint sets in the algebra then this finite additive measure of the union becomes the sum of the individual uh, measures so that's the definition of a finite additive measure now it's easy to uh, generalize this if you have this definition by an easy inductive argument the same thing works so in this, in this case if this is the setup, so if these two definitions hold for an uh, a subset A of the power set and this function mu, so if we have an algebra and on it we have a finite additive measure, then it's easy to find that for every n and every a1, a2, and so on, a n, n is an integer, in the algebra, so take any finite number of sets in the algebra first of all the union of a1 and a2 and and so on and so on a n is also in the algebra and therefore it makes sense to talk about this finite relative measure mu of that union because mu is defined on all of my algebra and then this union furthermore if a1 Let's, let's do it this way. AI intersection AJ is empty whenever I is not J and in between 1 and N. Okay, so whenever we have two different sets from A1 through AN, uh, so not the same index, and their intersection is empty, if my sets are such, then the mu measure of the union of all of them from 1 through a is going to be the sum of all of them from 1 through n of mu of a i okay so that's an easy consequence of the definitions you can do it up to n and then by inductive argument you can add the n plus first set and uh, then you have the you have the uh, statement for any finite n Okay, so that was the finitely additive measure on algebras, and then as it turns out, this is actually not entirely fit for the purpose of probability theory, it's too simple, so we're going to do a little bit more complicated with this. It said that we have a dotted paper now, which I'm going to remove. Okay. So we are going to uh, generalize this to something called the sigma algebra, which is better fit for the purpose of probability theory. Okay, so that's my next step here to do. All right. Okay, so definition. Definition. Uh, again, I have my sample space omega, and again, I'm looking at the power set of omega, but this time I'm going to define a slightly different family. 
f being a subset of the power set of omega is called a sigma algebra if the following is satisfied first the all of my sample space omega is member of this family so again we're looking at a member f uh, sorry a family f of subsets of omega and omega itself must belong to this family okay b for every a1 a2 and so on in f in this family the union of these guys must be also in the family and now here is the crucial point before i was talking about two of these sets in the previous page in the algebra not sigma algebra just algebra i was talking about two of these sets this time i'm talking about more than two and we saw that any finite number was a consequence of being an algebra however here this can be and that's the important bit this can be countably infinitely many so it could be the case that i'm not only looking at two or three or any finite number of events it could be the case that i have a sequence of events that there is an infinite list of them and if the infinite list each belongs to the family f then the union also must belong to the family f okay that's part b and that's what makes a difference from an algebra to a sigma algebra that we are now allowing to look at an infinite sequence of these events all right so that's property b property c is the same as before if a belongs to this family then its complement a complement also belongs to the family all right and as before the following is still true it follows that if a1 a2 and so on and so on belongs to this family f script f then the infinite intersection also belongs to the family okay so again the main difference between an algebra and a sigma algebra is that on an algebra we're only looking at finitely many of these sets here it could be either finitely many or infinitely many and if they all belong to the sigma algebra then the union as well belongs to the sigma algebra other than that it's a very similar setup to algebras so first let me just mention here that if this holds if all of this definition holds then the pair omega and f is called a measurable space and this is going to be the pair on which measures will live so the next thing i want to do is define what a measure is now i can actually define a measure on an algebra already i don't need a sigma algebra for that a measure mu on an algebra a is a set function from a so i'm going to do script a to the interval zero one uh, sorry zero infinity for the moment zero infinity with the following properties namely if i take any sequence of sets a1 a2 and so on and so on in a such that the union of these sets and uh, i'm not going to stop with this union so this could be again either finitely many or it could be countably infinitely many and the union actually goes on the same uh, range so it could be either let me let me just denote this by another color so it could be either going up to a finite number in which case the union goes up to a finite number or it could be up to infinity it never stops so i could have infinitely many 
infinitely many of them, in which case the union would go up to infinity. So in both cases, if I have if I have uh, these uh, sets, finitely or infinitely many sets, such that the union of them still belongs to my algebra, and any two do not overlap, AI intersection AJ is empty whenever I is not J. Okay, so I have disjoint sets, either finitely many, the green case, or infinitely many, the orange case, and the union belongs to the algebra, then the then the measure of the union, which could again be finite or infinite union, is going to be the sum over the same range of indices of the measure of the individual A's. Again, this sum could be finite or infinite, finite in the green case and infinite in the orange case. Okay? And that's what makes a measure. Now, what is this whole fuss about being in the algebra? So if I just have an algebra, then I know that any finite uh, number of sets in the algebra, if I take the union of these, it's still in the algebra. So there is no interesting thing here. If I'm in the orange case and I'm looking at infinitely many sets in an algebra, there is no guarantee for an algebra that the union of infinitely many things is still in the algebra. There is, however, a guarantee in the case of a sigma algebra. A sigma algebra is a more restrictive thing it is also an algebra, so this A could be understood as a sigma algebra, and indeed, in most cases, we are actually going to talk about sigma algebras. So this A, this script A, often will actually be a sigma algebra itself, not only an algebra, but a more restrictive thing, a sigma algebra. So most often, this definition will be done for sigma algebras, okay? In that case, the union will automatically be in the sigma algebra. That's what the definition of a sigma algebra was. So the natural thing to apply this whole business on is sigma algebras, where this is not, not an issue. If you take any finite or infinitely many sets in a sigma algebra, the union will be in a sigma algebra. Okay? But for some reason, it makes sense to do this definition for an algebra only, in which case, if I'm in the orange infinitely many sets case, then the infinite union must be in the algebra in order for this to make sense. Okay, so that's just a, a little side remarks. It's not very important. The important thing is that the measure can take an infinite disjoint union or finite disjoint union and be additive on there. That's what the measure is. Okay, this property is called sigma additivity, and it's again in particular important in the infinite case. Sigma additivity. That's what this property is called. So a sigma additive uh, set function from the algebra or sigma algebra to the interval zero infinity is called a measure. Okay. If it actually goes to zero one, then it's called a probability measure. So if uh, let's use this color here. If mu of omega, which is actually the largest thing it can be, it's easy to find out that omega is the largest subset of omega, so mu of omega must be the largest number among all. If mu of omega, the largest thing it can be, is 1, in other words, if this thing here is not infinitely just 1, then we are talking about and mu is a measure, then mu is a probability measure. So that's the definition of a probability measure. A probability measure is a measure with total mass 1. So mu of the total thing is 1. Otherwise mu is a measure. That makes it a probability measure.